Well, organizers of the plan nationwide hashtag end bad governance in Nigeria protests insist they will go ahead with the action with several civil society organizations and citizen-based groups coalescing to make it violence-free and ensure that their message to government on the high level of hunger and cost of living is heard loudly. In Abuja, one of such groups has asked uh, FCT Minister Nyesom Wike to help prepare its preferred protest ground, Eagle Square, which they intend to use for the 10-day peaceful protest, uh, which begins on Thursday, August 1. Now, the Take It Back movement, in a letter signed by Damilaria Denola, the Director of Mobilization, uh, the protesters are demanding a 24 hours unrestricted access to the Eagle Square throughout the duration of the protest. But the FCT minister, Yesom Wiki, says Abuja will not be available for any form of protest, calling on residents of the nation's capital to instead get ready for celebration as traditional rulers will be receiving their certificates of recognition and staff of office same day. Now, the presidency has also been responding to the protest notice with President Bola Tinobu holding several meetings with several bodies while the police and other security services are warning Nigerian youth sternly against the planned protests, saying they are on red alert to quell violent protests in any guise. Well, to help us understand the issues at stake, we have joining us here a member of one of the civil society organizations planning the nationwide protest, Damilor, Damilari Adenola. Thank you so much for joining us. He's the director of mobilization, Take It Back Movement, and of course, also joining us here is the president of the Arewa Defense League and convener of uh, the Joint Action of Northern uh, Joint Action Committee of Northern Youth Associations, Murtala Abubakar. Thank you so much for joining us. So, all right. So let's start with you, Damilari. Uh, talk to us about your your decision to write the FCT minister to actually require. Uh, the Eagle Square for this. I mean, you would have heard the authorities saying that Nigerian youths should shelve this uh, protest, but you have said that you're going ahead with it and you've written uh, the FCT minister. And uh, have, have you got any official response? Let's start no, from there. Well, our decision is uh, motivated by our rights, our constitutionally guaranteed rights, uh, under the sections of the law, section 39. 40 and for the one of the Constitutional Fair Republic of Nigeria to express ourselves and then, um, you know, uh, to assembly and uh, movement. And we also believe that the Eagle Square is a public facility that ought to be available for public use. If you say public use, it's for the use of the masses. Not so, just for official government functions. Uh, no, no, for the masses. <laughs> okay. All these facilities are built for us, you and I. So, I believe that regarding this uh, issue, we haven't done anything without the confines of the law, if at all it is uh, you know, Minister Wiki who has been making you know, vituperations that are arbitrary and illegal by you know, trying to derogate our freedom of expression and our freedom of movement by uttering such words which are capable of threatening peaceful protesters, or which are capable of you know, uh, putting peaceful demonstrators in apprehension of fear. And I, I believe that it, it, it is uh, Minister Wiki who has been doing everything outside the confines of the law to prevent peaceful Nigerians, to prevent suffering Nigerians, to prevent hungry Nigerians from demonstrating their rights to show displeasure to the current hardship which has been occasioned by the government of the day. Yeah, but have you got any official document saying that the government has rejected it or it's going to give you the venue? Well, uh, I believe that these facilities belong to the people and um, the people need not to you know, observe any protocol before they access these facilities. I believe that we should be accorded the right to show our displeasure because we have been offended. Okay. We are angry. All right. All right. I would ask you to hold on there while we get uh, Murtal Abubakar to speak with us. I mean, talk to us about uh, your own view as to this uh, protest. Young Nigerians everywhere speaking about this. They've been cautioned from the president down to the monarchs. I mean, several traditional rulers have been meeting with the president, and uh, religious leaders are also divided about it. What's uh, the overview uh, about uh, this uh, intended protest? Well, um, 
just like uh, he, he rightly observed, right to protest, right to assemble, and the uh, other rights are constitutionally guaranteed rights. However, we must also recognize that no right is absolute. Your right begins where another person's right uh, starts. And the uh, democracy itself is anchored on rule of law. And the rule of law is to differentiate what is right from what is wrong. Even what is right, it also regulated on how to go about it. Because you are living in a space that is occupied by so many. So if there is no regulations on human conduct, there will be conflict. And the, the essence of law, after all, is to prevent that. However, uh, many Nigerians are dissatisfied over time with the state of affairs in this country. And uh, every election year, different political party comes with different programs, uh, uh, promising to change things for the better. And the more we are voting, the more we are progressing, the more things get degenerating. It means there are fundamental things that we as Nigerians are doing that is not good. And then in situations like this, what is required is to put up your thinking cap, to be strategic, to be deep, to reflect, and come up with a way to get out of that quagmire. And then that is why, from our own side, we recognize that uh, as young people, you are, they are critical stakeholders, right? But again, there are other stakeholders that needed to be taken along. And uh, in engaging in sensitive things such as protests of this nature, given our experience in the past, because if you are talking of uh, maybe uh, uh, doing anything that will create chaos, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, insecurity and what have you. So we are already familiar with it and it has not given us any result. Therefore, we have decided that our, the best way to approach this is to build consensus around all the issues. If we are, if so I, should the protest go on or it should be put on hold from your own perspective? We have not gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, it has to be done on a conceptual uh, you know, uh, level. So we have listened to the elders, we have listened to the ulamas, we have uh, also engaged with the uh, other critical stakeholders. So we are going to review all the you know, discussions. At the end of the day, we are going to come up with the best possible option that will not lead us into further problem, but solution to what we have, we are, we have been faced with. All right, uh, so you would have listened to him. Uh, there's that morbid fear within the government, uh, elders within the country, that if allowed to go on, that this protest will degenerate into anarchy like it happened uh, a few days after ENSA. So maybe the first day will go well, or maybe even second day, but the third day is what they are afraid of. So how do you react? Yes, let me quickly respond to my brother here, who said that uh, he doesn't feel like it's time for protest. Uh, mainly because uh, there's need for consultation with stakeholders. But uh, what he fails to understand is that with the current situation in the country today, the stakeholders are the hungry Nigerians. The stakeholders in this country are the unemployed youths whose uh, dreams are being killed by thoughtless, Nigerian po thoughtless government policies. The stakeholders today are the marginalized people, economically marginalized workers. The stakeholders in this protest today are the underpaid workers who labor day and night to create the economy you and I uh, you know, have to live on that to survive. And um, you cannot refer to overfed uh, religious leaders, overfed monarchs, or whatsoever as the stakeholders who decides uh, you know, how the common people... The In people other words, are you saying that the government has not been engaging the young people, yes, the youth? The government needs it's to, more of the same people the that are the, have the, been, the, been, the, been yeah, speaking the youth with. Actually constitute a larger percentage of uh, the citizens of this country, and the youths honorably are the future of this country. The youths are the engine room of this country, and they are the people who have been marginalized, who have been neglected. Now, in a country where minimum wage is 70,000 Naira, 
what is the future for a young person who is currently an undergraduate who is waiting to you know, enter the labor market. Uh, I mean, but shouldn't that be a plus so, uh, for young people? Because the minimum wage before last week was 30,000 naira. Given, the, given the current inflation rate, food, food inflation, for instance, is at 40%, and you are giving uh, a minimum wage of 70,000, which is less than 40%, uh, 40 do, uh, $50 to uh, a, a married man, how can uh, 70,000 naira cater for the daily? When, when we are talking about minimum wage, we are talking of living wage. Look at the, uh, the cost of living in this country today. Between me and you, if we have conscience, can 70,000 naira cater for a bachelor? No. So right. speaking to the matter of, uh, you know, uh, uh, their preemption, they have a preemption already. They are creating a preemption already, which I think is deliberate. It's a way to demonize the genuine agitation of, uh, you know, suffering Nigerians and hungry Nigerians, which I feel like is an insult to hungry Nigerian or it's, uh, it's a way of, you know, they are being half clever because a protest for a protest that has not started, you have begun to predict the direction. You are the ones. If I, 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 I always say it, I that speaking if, if you based have, on what used to happen sir, in the sir, past. If you have uh, intelligence that some people are trying to hijack the protest, the only way to go about it in order to show your competence is to go pick them. The DSS have said it that they have it's the same DSS that uh, that has been unable to pick your Abilu for how many months now? Are the ones saying they have intel that uh, some people are trying to hijack protest? Fine, it's good. We are peaceful, loving uh, people. We are peace loving people. And we are saying if you have intelligence that some people are trying to cause me chaos, go and pick them. Oh, and all right. we are not saying that you should not be on ground when we are protesting because it is also our right to enjoy protection of our you know, lives and properties. And if you see on the day of the protest, if you see anybody trying to foment violence, go and pick them. It's better than you uh, uh, trying to you know, uh, put fear in the mind of our. Uh, Common Nigerians, you beat a, a, a child and you tell them not to cry. That's cruel. That's wicked. All right. <laughs> and I bring you back more to life. I mean, you would have heard that, that mm. most Nigerian youths have been beaten. And of course, hunger and uh, 70,000 naira, according to him, uh, is not fit enough as minimum wage, despite the government sending that into law. Uh, I mean, uh, the National Assembly passing that into law. How do you react? Well, uh, you see, in a conversation like this, it's always very important for us to be clear about every issue. Now, even as you asked me a question that I responded, he's not even patient enough to listen to my response. You even asked at the end of your question, is the, are we going or not going? I say it's, it's still an issue that we are still negotiating and uh, consulting over. But he has jumped to the conclusion that uh, we have uh, said something I have not said. You see, the problem number one about all this issue is that we are not even telling ourselves the truth. And what's the truth in this instance? The truth is that even the agitation, the, uh, the agitators, if you ask them clearly to tell you why they are into this agitation, they cannot tell you. And then I also want to tell you that for the f this is even the first time I'm even seeing somebody from his own group now that is coming to say that yeah they are owning up they want to you know organize the protest i mean but people again, have been on social media and everywhere saying that look th even if it's going to be one person that is they are going to go out there I must it be a group of people so. before no, people can come out to protest precisely can't individuals i mean as constitutionally I, guaranteed stand up to protest an individual can but again given the massive number that you are calling for to participate you need to have leadership that is structured to give guidelines, to give directions, to give orders. Even in the event that, uh, okay, at the end of the whole brouhaha, government listening to you and all some uh, stakeholders want to, you know, come in between. So who are they going to negotiate with? Is it the crowd? People that are faceless, that are not known? So you don't, you don't do things like that. So issue of national security, issue of uh, stability, issue of survival is critical. And that is why it's always important to read history and, 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 and put it to you know, use. In recent time, tell me any country that engage in, the, in, 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 in protests protest. in a manner that mm. they are uh, planning that are survive it. All right, so, so, so there's that fear that there could actually be a serious national crisis. That's, that's because there's view. no leadership. 
Okay. So how do you react to this kind of accusation by the government? And I mean, elderly people too have been speaking. I mean, with. They I mean, said that this protest is being called by faceless people. I mean, In fact, some opposition politicians have been accused of sponsoring maybe groups like yours and all of that, I mean, uh, though I mean, they've denied it. Really sad that my brother, uh, who comes from the northern part of Nigeria, where recently we've had that, you know, statistics being read out to suggest that um, the number of out-of-school children is rising, and uh, which gives a room for recruitment into terrorism. My brother comes from a region that has been you know, terrorized by uh, uh, terrorists, and then um, my brother is here today trying to, you know, uh, downplay the agitation of uh, these out-of-school children. My brother is here today trying to downplay the, you know, the feelings, trying to demonize the feelings of um, a common northerner who has been economically deprived, deprived of education, well, deprived I mean, of life. Aren't most Nigerians of life. been economically deprived? It's not I just know. the north. I, I mean. know. I agree. I agree. <laughs> but statistics have, uh, you know, uh, pointed to the fact that uh, this, especially for the impact of terrorism, which has made this issue more severe in the north. So I feel like if there's anybody who should be even more agitated, it should be my brother who comes from these places. But I, I want to ask my brother if we had a sincere government, if we had a working system, terrorism ought not to have lasted this long in the northern region. Yeah, but it's not that have. of one government. I just want to ask you this. Do these protesters have anything directly against the Tunubu government or it is against all forms of government we in are Nigeria, we are both the federal, the state, and local government. Because the fear within some political circles is that this is targeted at removing the administration of President Bola Tinubu. No. Whatever their preemption is, it is their problem. We have said it, and we have, we have reeled out our demands, and they are clear. We said reverse uh, the subsidy removal policy. We said we want the constitution to be scrapped, and, um, and we want to enter. I mean, if you say the constitution enter, should be scrapped, we want to enter. wouldn't there be an anarchy? I mean, because no, there no, has to be a governing it's, document. It's, it's fine. There could be a, a temporary uh, you know, document, okay. a temporary constitution. There could be an interim con constitution. We've seen it in several countries. You know, what, we, what I'm simply saying is that we should go into a constitutional conference uh, where which uh, the interest of every Nigerian reflects and he's saying in, with we, who? We you are saying we because he's saying that your groups are faceless. No, no, that's a, that's and an so insult. <laughs> that's an insult. I'm, I'm here sitting before you, my brother. How, how could you say I am faceless? How could you say? Are you trying to say that some Nigerians are more privileged than the others because they have because uh, they you you think that uh, you think right, that you have no you've heard. or you he think that, that the groups are not faceless? That how, you how are you just see, the ones how do you who are making it. Hungry Nigerians are faceless. faceless. How, I, I I feel like you are you are, you are trying to you know uh, downplay. The genuine agitation of oh, the, all right. people, uh, the young Nigerians. Of you, I, I well, uh, Somna, I'll try as much as possible not to allow anybody to even distract me from the issue you are asking. Now, what we are simply saying is that uh, if you are looking for a solution, you don't create problem. That I mean, uh, uh, protesting is a problem actually. This is what isn't I, it a constitutional right? I, I have established that from the onset. And I have also told you why the kind of protest that some self-style you know, uh, critics who always arrogate to themselves to even know more than the rest will not tell me that I coming from the northern part of this country where we have an issue of out of, out of uh, school dropout that uh, I should, because of that, uh, uh, stupidly, well, without I mean, interrogating. We don't pass such that. words. Okay, fine. Uh, without, so, without interrogating motives, uh, nature, and even structure of something that is capable of drilling the entire system. And because I sound a note of caution that things like this require concerted, you know, effort require consultations, require strict adherence to, regulation, uh, to re regulations. Somebody who is here tell you that they wanted National uh, Eagle Square, and you told him if they have written or they have uh, he will tell you that it's just their you know, natural right to use it anytime and anyhow they want. Does this kind of comment 
coming from these people not sound like anarchists to you? And is this not enough to alarm Nigerians and begin to ask beyond the surface? Okay, well, they have said that the police should go ahead with them alongside other security agencies and all of that. Some of the demands that they want have been mentioned. Aren't you also alarmed by the, by the level of hunger in the country? And he's saying Very well. insecurity, Very he's saying well. lack of jobs for young people. Very well. How can we find solutions to this problem, both for those in government and out? Uh, sorry, let, let him just hit on that again. Very good. Like I said to you, constitutionally, there are procedural uh, steps. In the first place, democracy is all about uh, inclusion. And if you are talking about inclusion, you are talking about safeguarding the collective interest of the greater majority of the people. Now, if the greater majority of the people find their, their, uh, themselves where we are today, then if we are going to look for a solution, so we also have to build consensus. It's not some few people that will arrogate to themselves to say that they know what is right to do and what is wrong to do. And also come with some strong worded languages that are, are piling to some sections and begin to <laughs> Well, you wouldn't say some sections because I've heard that even in, in mosques and churches, people are telling their leaders that, look, just allow us to vent our anger this time around. Bet, just make sure, we will make sure it's peaceful. Your anger, yeah, just hold on. Vent your anger is your right, but be sensitive to the feelings of others. Okay, you have heard them, uh, them like. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm worried that uh, my brother here is afraid on behalf of the government. The people in power should be the ones who are afraid and you should also propel them to do the right thing. And now, what's the right thing in this the, instance? The right thing is to meet our demands. Create a system, a political system that serves the interest of the people. A system that supersedes the interference of individuals. A system where impunity is going to be, you know, on a low or non-existent at all. A system where, uh, you know, to get the, 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 the barest minimum things done in the Nigerian ministry. Uh, do you know of the renewed hope agenda and do you believe in it? Because the government says that's what they are using to solve these problems. A renewed, hope, a renewable, a renewed hope agenda that started with hardship is renewed hardship. How could you say you are bringing <laughs> a renewed hope and on the day you came to power, you, 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 you ignited hardship against the people. People, transportation costs skyrocketed immediately. Food costs skyrocketed immediately. That's, that's renewed hardship. And I, I feel like there's no need. I, I, well, I, I don't disagree with my brother here who said that, who said consultation. What we are simply doing on the streets too, by protesting is consultation. Yeah, but we are you also consulted your elected office. lawmakers at I'm, the I'm, federal, I'm, state, and local government sir, level because sir, that's why they are your voices sir, sir, in parliament. These, these people, if these people have the will, to serve us, would it be wrong to come and join us on the streets to dialogue? Would it be wrong for them to come and meet us? We are saying that, come and meet us. We have been agitating peacefully on, what's, uh, on, on the social media all the while uh, for, every th for every time that uh, Mr. Tinubu brings his harsh policies. Well, we clamor against President this thing. But he doesn't, uh, uh, President Tinubu, he doesn't mm -hmm. listen to us. And now we have said that it seems that the, like, protest is the only language that African governments understand. Look at Kenya uh, today. Just how many days of protesting? Look at how many demands that have been met by President Ruto. And all this, all this why they've consulted and consulted. In fact, if you're even talking of consultation, you should be talking of consultation in a country where uh, checks and balances are possible, in a country where the machineries are set for their, for engagement. Look at Nigeria today. To engage a local government chairman is almost impossible. To, you know, to even put uh, the FOI, the provisions of the FOI into motion. It's yeah. almost impossible so to because there are no from government yes, institutions. Because these okay. systems are not there. As we try to round off this conversation, uh, you seem hell bent on going ahead with this uh, protest. Uh, but not, you are I'm saying, I'm not being hell bent. Yeah, I mean, I'm, the, I'm the, the, the young as, people as you are representing. Young people I mean, are, all of you know, us. Who are hungry? Yeah, I mean, who are unemployed? All of you are so representing, representing different segments of the young people. So how do we ensure that even if uh, some segments of the young people go ahead to protest, that this protest doesn't become, uh, do, doesn't blossom into anarchy. Of because course. That's the major fear of that's where the here and some That's where the competence. No, I, I, should we just agree that the security agencies in this country are not competent? Well, you, you wouldn't say that because if they aren't, maybe you wouldn't be here. I mean, yes, that's despite what the challenges so, of the police, so this isn't is that the reason why? This is an avenue for them to show their competence. 
If you have intelligence that some people are trying to foment violence, go and pick them. Okay, so that's the solution. So how do we ensure of, you that those who come out, who do come out, from then Larry, just rights. hold on. How do we ensure that those who intend to come out go ahead to do this protest without violence? How do we ensure that security forces and the government manage this situation so that it doesn't become chaotic? Fine. You see, that is why security is everybody's business. If somebody will come here with the notion to think that uh, securing a nation is absolute responsibility of a police. So you can now begin to see the mindset from where these elements are coming from. And that is also what is making conversation, discussion, dialogue, uh, try to make st st uh, them see things from a different perspective difficult. Because they are coming with an open, you know, a so sorry, closed mind. And they think they have found solution to all these problems. Um, today, the best way for us to hold anybody accountable and bring back this system to order is for, is it, it is until when we, take, we get hold of the political party through which we recruit our leaders. So if young people at this point are not looking at that po uh, position, then it also tells you that even the democracy itself, they are beginning to question it. So in validity. other words, you're advising that political so, parties should be held responsible for their campaign promises. Not only that, there's serious issue with our party uh, politics. So this, the party are completely uh, lack ideology. So the young people, if you have an idea that today we have been facing this problem simply because there's no clear cut ideological uh, 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 position around those political parties, we should begin to go into those political parties with an idea that we think can work. Yeah, but what they are saying is that mm. the immediate thing right now is that there's hunger in the land. The, there is hunger in the land. Transportation costs the, and all of that. So how land. does the government solve that now, between now and Thursday, uh, 1st of August? How, what do you think can be done as we try we to can, we, as we are, As we are widening the consultations, telling them our angers. If I tell you some of the, uh, the, the responses we get out, out of the consultation we, we've had so far, and the progress we have made, which brings so many of the uh, people that are supposed to be doing certain things at a certain point that just relax and think somebody yeah, else... because we've been seeing groups saying that they've withdrawn, they've withdrawn, they've withdrawn. Have, have you been promised jobs? Have you been promised more opportunities? What exactly are those that some of you, I mean, youth leaders are meeting with those in government promising people like you? What, 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 what we are telling them is that we need to recognize where the problems are coming from. And the issue of nation building is not something that is done in a day. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, every society are faced with their own peculiar you know, challenges. So the ability of us to recognize those uh, challenges and come up with an innovative uh, means by which on a cooperative and co uh, collaborative basis we can resolve them, that is what will take us out of this quagmire. But anybody who will just sit down and think that, is some people somewhere that are responsible for our whole, whole problem, and you are right that you are not part of that problem. And the only time you get hit, you say, okay, let me go and protest and create chaos and anarchy. That is when they will listen. Who? All of us are responsible for this problem. Because from the point, like I told you, of the poli uh, allowing some uh, characters to take over the machineries of the political parties and uh, pushing forward, similar, you know, uh, challenges to go and represent us up to the time they came to the general election and we, we, we as a voter are left with no options. So we, we will select one out of the two and we continue to see this kind of thing. All right, so, so you, are, you are hinging on political participation. He's saying that the political space needs to be opened up for younger people to get into government and all of that. The, the, but the, the truth is that um, democracy is not all about party politicking. Okay. Right to protest is part of democracy. Yeah. And if you have no issues with people exercising or not exercising their right to vote and be voted for, then why do you have issues with people trying to express themselves by protesting a right which is constitutionally guaranteed? So my problem is that have you preempted 
hungry Nigerians. Are you agreeing that an hungry person is an angry person? Uh -huh. Are you are you are yeah. you agreeing? And if you agree to that, <laughs> yeah. then make life easy for common people. Uh, so, so if we President Tinubu addresses the nation now between now and Thursday, this. national broadcast providing concessions like we had uh, President Ruto in Kenya doing here and there. Okay, uh, maybe he's sacking some ministers or mm. maybe bringing in more young people into government. Would that assuage the feelings of uh, the uh, I, I, angry I, I, Nigerian? I, at least, at least we have to, you know, see signs that we have reasonable people in power. We have people who have the interest of the people uh, they are serving. We voted for these people. Yeah, these what people could be that us. key demand between now and Thursday that could actually make groups like yours to uh, push back a bit? We want a commitment that the constitution will be, you know, uh, overhauled and it will be done in such a way that it would, you know, create uh, a system that will serve the interest of the people and ensure the social welfare of the people is guaranteed. Look at the 1999 constitution. We have a chapter two that, uh, that is supposed to guarantee the social welfare of the people, which is not enforceable. Yeah, it's not justiciable. So it's not justiciable. So we are saying that give us a constitution that allows checks and balances, serious checks and balances, a constitution that checks excessive use of our people in power. We are saying that you should release all NSAS protesters and other political prisoners. We are saying you should slash are the there price. Political prisoners in Nigeria. Of course, we are saying you should <laughs> slash. We are saying you should slash know. the prices of food and transportation mm -hmm. so that you can ease the current anger of the people. I'm telling you that the greatest way to demobilize this protest is to answer these demands. If you think that these utterances of uh, threats, you cannot threaten hungry people. Because yeah, but I, I, you have, you have I read some of these things already. supposed to be resolved by. The National Assembly to you. Talk of constitutional review, it's not President Tinubu's job to do that. We need uh, but at least we are not protesting against them. President Tinubu alone. What of we state are, governors? That yes, state yeah, governors, this, protest is not, this protest is not holding in the FCT alone. This protest has been you know, uh, announced to hold in various House of Assemblies in, across the country. So right. this protest is not against uh, the government. So what we are simply saying is that. You should give us a system that serves the interests of the people. Look at our criminal justice system. Look at, look at the prisons. They are populated by awaiting trial uh, people, you know. Just, just, the courts are congested with cases. Give us a system that, you know, life, that makes life easy for us. Governance is about the people. People are hungry. All, all right, uh, just before we go, 30 seconds each. Uh, uh, how would you advise law enforcement agents to handle the scenario between now and Thursday, and even uh, 10th of August when, I mean, they are saying that they will continue with this strike. How do we manage this so that the actions of police do also not provoke, uh, you know, peaceful protesters like he is saying? Well, um, if a, pro a protest that is designed to be peaceful, we usually have leadership. We usually have um, a being point A of commencement to where the something supposed to terminate mm -hmm. or the durations by which or you know a, a lo location where they needed to be you know and um, well, he has said that they are using ego square and then <laughs> the, the idea of police only yesterday told them that they need to be furnished with this information so that they can help them uh, do it peacefully and now you uh, and uh, very quickly because so, we're, so we're, and, we're and, and, and the uh, federal capital territory uh, administration. I don't know whether if the Eagle Square is under their authority yeah, yeah, I mean or not. Yeah, but again, they have already uh, put it for an, another important uh, occasion. And then you are now saying that your own occasion is more important than the other. And then, so uh, for me, the only way to help the police is for the protestants to have leadership that are responsible that are, are, are guided uh, and right. that, that uh, are I'm also made we don't have enough time. Uh, he's saying that there must be faces, leaders, and all of that. Well, I know you're one of them, mobilizing people here and there. Very quickly, in 30 seconds, how do we ensure yes. that it doesn't degenerate into anarchy and we'll have protests, maybe with letters handed over to uh, those first, you're first protesting all, against? First of all, the wordings of the Constitution are clear. There's no way in the laws of the country where I've read that... Uh, we need to write to the IG to submit our names because, uh, you know, we are trying to exercise this. this, this. I don't think there are yeah, exceptions I mean, the to that. I don't think there are exceptions to yeah. uh, Section 39, 40, 
41, which includes uh, your, the clause is trying to import now that we have to give our details to the police. What the law says is that we have a right to protest. We have a right to express our feelings in as much as we do not, you know, cause violence. We do not, uh, you know, attack, you know, oh, other Nigerians. Right. So, yes, and I, I, I'm simply saying to my brother that you are free to join us. Do not be afraid. Come and join <laughs> the people. Come and join. All right. You so, be on uh, the side of the people, my I brother. Mean, uh, Murtala is extending the, an invitation to you to join the protest, but we must thank you so much. Uh, Damilari Adenola is the director of mobilization of the Take It Back uh, movement, uh, one of the civil society organizations planning uh, the nationwide protests against hunger and, uh, of course, the anger against uh, Bad, bad governance in Nigeria. And then, of course, Amrutala Bubukar is the president of the Ariwa Defense League. We must thank you so much for helping us understand the this. And uh, I can say that both of you actually represent the different sides of the youth. Yeah. But please, let's just take it easy and ensure that we still have a country to run at the end of the it's protest. And those who are in power should actually listen to what all these young people are saying across the country. Yes.